from New York, birthplace of the menacing scowl, it's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, Eddie Murphy, Dick Cavett, and musician Ruben Blades. Also, card and gift shop finds. And now, a man who still doesn't like to talk about his marriage to Marilyn Monroe, David Letterman! Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the program. My name is Paul. Let's do a song right off the top here. All right. Let's do the uh, the Stevie Nicks thing, One Winged Dove. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed that at home. <sighs> interesting, uh, interesting article in Harper's Magazine. Did you get your copy this month, Bill? Yes, I did. The ten most beautiful women in the United States of America. And you know who was listed on the list? And I think this is fair. Barbara Walters was uh, on the list. She. <laughs> She said that, uh, they asked for one of her beauty tips, she says, always use pink nail polish on your nails to uh, cover up any uh, cracks or broken parts. She said she learned it from Hugh Downs. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with me. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, oh, thanks. Uh, this city, New York City, you know, gosh, I love this town. It's, it's in my blood, it's in, I just can't, uh, it's my kind of town, and, uh, but it's, the crime is unbelievable. You know what happened last night? You know McGruff, the crime dog? <laughs> Listen to this, a roving band of toughs jumped him and neutered him. And finally, the publisher's clearinghouse people, the, you know, they give it everywhere, they, they give away a million bucks. The publisher's uh, clearinghouse sweepstakes. And they conducted a poll and they distributed little cards to people and they asked them to, to uh, tell them why they didn't enter the sweepstakes every year because uh, they wanted to increase the people participating in it. And they found out the number one reason people don't enter that thing is they say a million dollars is not worth the nightmare of meeting Ed McMahon. <laughs> Oh, stop it. <laughs> Awful joke, and uh, oh, we got a good show. Here's our good friend, uh, Paul Schaefer. Say hello to Paul Schaefer. Thank you very much. David, thank you very much. Nice to see you. Well, we're all kind of thrilled, David. We had a little blessed event last night. Well, let me do this one. Let okay. me do this one. Swing. Well, all right. Sid Go McGinnis, yeah. our own Sid McGinnis, had a baby girl. He and his wife had a baby girl yesterday, Catherine Earl McGinnis. Congratulations, Sid. <laughs> but that's not all. Our own beloved, revered Gerard Mulligan and his wife Ellen also had a baby yesterday. They had a baby boy, Kevin Mulligan. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, and so, uh, and everybody's fine, everybody's happy, and uh, good luck to everybody with their uh, new additions to their families. Paul, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. You don't great. mind if I call you a buddy, do you? No, uh, anything you want, man. Uh, you know, I got a call, I got a call. I know you got something to say, but I got something to say. just need a light, that's all. If any, you know. You get a light for Paul? We'll get you a yeah, light. We'll get, oh, now you see. I got a call from... Say it on TV, and you get a million. I got a call, Paul. Yeah. Oh, never mind. No, you no, go care. ahead. You don't care who called me. No, no, I just, I'm... Who called you? Do you care? Yes, very much so. Ronald Reagan called me last You're night. You're kidding. No. no President of the no, United no. States. He and Nancy had been up watching uh, James Brown on the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Called from the Western White House, and uh, they love it. They love it, and Nancy turns out is a really big James Brown fan. <laughs> And you know what he said? He said he thinks that this is the show, our television program right here, our show, is the show all Americans should be watching. Yeah. 
<laughs> Are you all right, Paul? Yes. All I'll right. Be fine. All right, we got a great show. Oh, well, let me tell you about something. We're going on vacation. I know again. Yes, we're going on vacation again. What happens in the studio when we're gone? They have kind of a tag sale in here, don't they? <laughs> Do you see the Today Show this morning? I'm telling you, this show, ladies and gentlemen, gets better and better all the time. If you're not familiar with the Today Show, it comes on at 6. It runs till noon. They have uh, <laughs> news, weather, sports, cartoons, recipes, fashion shows, on and on. Hal, Hal, show the folks what they can see tomorrow on the Today Show with our good friends, Jane and Bryant. Kids? I'm Bryant Gumbel. Tomorrow morning on Today, we'll look at airline safety. Are the engines safe? I'm Jane Pauley. Our video explosion series, Working Out with Jane Fonda. Tomorrow morning on Today. The Today Show. I'll tell you something about those airplane engines. They're not safe if you stand that close to them. <laughs> There's a dumb guy there. I just lost my watch. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, so anyway, we'll be on vacation. Uh, and uh, while we're away, we don't want to lose touch with our fine viewing audience. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you a number now, and you can call in and leave us a tape-recorded message. Okay? Be on your best behavior, please. <laughs> By the way, don't sue me. I don't want anybody suing me either, okay? No more suits. <laughs> it blew over. I took her to lunch. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, here is the telephone number. If you would like to call and leave us a message, uh, the lines will be open September 3rd. That's a Tuesday from approximately 1 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, noon to 4 p.m. Central Time, 11 to 3 p.m. Mountain Time, 10 to 2 p.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Atlantic Time. Here is the number. 1, there it is on our screen, 900-720-DAVE. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the message you'll get to hear when you call in. Now, this call will cost you what? 50 cents. That's all it's going to cost you, right? 50 cents to leave the message. Let's take a listen now to the recorded message you'll hear when you call in. Hi, this is Paul Schaefer. Dave isn't here right now. He's hitchhiking to the Wisconsin Dells. But please leave your name, your phone number, including area phone code, number? and a short message or question. He'll try to get back to you after vacation. All right, so now when we get back, see what'll happen here. We'll play these messages back, and we'll have seven, eight minutes of solid comedy. <laughs> the cost to us, absolutely nothing. <laughs> yep, this is the show all Americans should watch. Well, let's get right to the... Do we have time for the first piece? I'm really looking forward to this opening piece tonight. I have such a wonderful feeling about it. I don't know, it's giving off some kind of positive radiation here. I just... Oh, God, I'm excited. So let's get right to it, shall we? Okay, here we have, ladies and gentlemen, a series of, of things that we have purchased in gift shops and souvenir shops all around the United States. So let's get right to it, shall we? Paul, do we have music for this? Yeah, sure. <laughs> You don't care, do you? You just don't care, do you? That's a special theme that I wrote for this segment. No, no, that's, that's Fifth Avenue or something, isn't it? Well, na, 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 it's, na, na, na. it's reminiscent of the bridge of, uh, you know, Easter Parade by Irving Berlin, I think. Now, what does that get to do with souvenirs? Well, it's just it struck me that I should live that. You don't that. care, do you, Paul? You just don't care. <laughs> I took The president and his wife watch this show nightly. They love you and James Brown. In fact, that's what they said. Nancy said, more James Brown. That was an original theme that I wrote. It was composed. not. Happy Holidays, also, it sounds a little like that, yeah. too. <laughs> I can't wait to get to this piece. It's going it to be so festive. much fun. The theme was festive. Yeah. All right, here's Want to hear it again? No. no we... Here's the first... Because if I play it again, you know. All right, a little bit more. <laughs> okay. Here's the first souvenir purchased in a souvenir or gift shop somewhere in the United States. This one comes to us from New York City. It's an I Love New York back scratcher. <laughs> to remind you of that popular New York expression, spare change, mister? That's very catchy music, by the way. Thank you. Thank you very Nancy much. said it to me. More James Brown. Well, is he busy? <laughs> <laughs> Do 
It's a woozy, a little doll we purchased in a gift or souvenir store somewhere in the United States. It's a woozy. Who wouldn't love a little lady with a jumpy stomach? Uh, <laughs> Gumble tomorrow morning on Today. We'll look at airline safety. Are the engines safe? I'm Jane Foley, a video explosion series working out with Jane Fonda. Tomorrow morning. On today. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Found in a souvenir or gift shop somewhere in the United States. The milk bottle and plastic hammer. Here's something all parents want to teach their kids. Hammer plus glass equals fun. Gosh, I hope we have enough time to get all of these in. All right, here's something nice. I'm going to put these on for better comedic effect. These, of course, are the Elvis earmuffs. <laughs> Need to make a good impression on that important job interview? <laughs> yeah, you can have those. those are the Elvis earmuffs, thank you. All right. Here's something we found in a souvenir or gift shop somewhere in the United States. Uh, fat... <laughs> this is Fat Lady Soap. Not, of good, not as good, of course, as showering with a real fat lady, but we think it's the next best thing. How much time do we have here? What are we doing on time? That's it? Oh, one more. All right, well, let's uh, get right to the big pay. Oh, no, we got two more. Let me just do this one real quickly. This is the Ben Franklin doll. Ben Franklin? Are you sure that's not B. Arthur? Okay, this is the Elvis Presley musical jewelry box. Get ready to cover me, Paul. She said that. More James Brown. What's he doing later? <laughs> I don't know. Elvis Presley musical jewelry box. There's been some kind of mix-up. This isn't Elvis, is it? No, this is... It's Don Ho, I think. It, all right, well... Okay, this little drawer here for all your prescription drugs. Just like being ringside at Caesar's Palace, isn't it? earlier about the big phone in to leave us a message uh, I have to add this one thing uh, each call will cost you 50 cents even if you don't reach the answering machine it'll cost you 50 cents NBC's portion of the proceeds will be donated to charity <laughs> I, I had to say this we had to say that why do we have to say this exactly it's true though isn't it goes to a charity doesn't it yes. how much money do they get a huge sum of money don't they a hundred two hundred thousand dollars from this from this little gimmick here goes to charity so, in your heart, think about it, and then call us. Ronnie and I just have one thing to say. More James Brown. My first guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen, will be hosting the second annual MTV Awards on September 13th. That takes place. He also has a brand new album out, which I have right here. It's entitled, How Could It Be? Not only an album, he also has a single right here, entitled, Party All the Time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Eddie Murphy. Good-looking guy. That's You're a good-looking guy. That's not out yet. It won't be out for three weeks. How could it be as the, the real album, the big album? The, it's an album. Yeah. <laughs> it's music. It's not comedy. No comedy on it? Oh, like what? <laughs> <laughs> it's not comedy. There's no comedy at all. What kind it's of music? music? Real music. Yeah. Serious music. This was 
produced by Rick James. Rick that James. Song. Produced, written, and arranged by this song. This mm -hmm. this is the the first song they're releasing called Party All the Time. Party All but the Time. But it's music. Yep. <laughs> now this is uh this is only one song on here, right? That's a giant 45 it's called. Yeah. Now what does that go for? Five dollars. And you get one song on each one side. One long song. <laughs> It's, this song is like... One side's the instrumental and the other side's the, the vocal. This is five minutes and 18 seconds long. Yeah. It's about a dollar a minute you get. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? Like, five cents, 11 cents. <laughs> now, do you, do you uh, play any instruments or you just sing? I play a little tiny bit of piano. This album was put out because... Um, I've always wanted to sing, and I guess I figured to put it out now, so if it didn't work, I could do jokes about it next year. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we're confident that it's going to be hot. Are you confident? Now, did, did, did you like what you heard? Did you like the finished product? Did you? Of course, I have a biased opinion because I worked on it for a year. Y'all have to be the judge of it. I like it. Okay, even if you're sitting there and go, this is terrible, you know, I'm sitting home going, I like it. I, <laughs> I like it. I like the album. Stevie Wonder wrote two songs on the album. Rick James wrote one. And a guy named Rusty Hamilton wrote one, and I wrote, and the music and the lyrics were like four of the songs. And yeah, y'all gonna be shocked. Y'all gonna sit there going, he's a monster. How could he do this? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, did you enjoy this more than comedy? That can't possibly be, can no, it? No, I'm, yeah. I'm always gonna, it's not like I'm <laughs> gonna stop doing comedy and be this singer all of a sudden. I always do comedy, and I'll never do serious movies and stuff. I just wanted to sing. You know, sometimes you say, I feel like singing. <laughs> and you sing, and the, the, I'm singing like on the record. We recorded it. What was Rick James like? Now, are you friends with Rick James? Rick's you knew him from friend. before you started the record? Yes. Now, what's it like? What kind of a life does this man lead these days? Rick's a wild guy. Yeah. He's everything you would think he would be and more. A lot of, lot of honeys? <laughs> 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 they was trying to talk Negro just now. <laughs> <laughs> so, I had, uh, so I suppose around Rick there are lots of honeys and <laughs> super cool chicks. <laughs> there are lots of honeys. <laughs> Is uh, uh, that you went up to? Uh, he lives in, in Buffalo. Yes. Is that right? He has a, re a studio up there. Uh, he's a studio in his basement. Yeah. How long did you spend up there? <laughs> I spent, uh, we got snowed in, so we, st this was last winter we mm -hmm. were working on the album, I spent like a week up with Rick James in his place. Yeah. Yes. Well, I hope it, I hope it works out really well for you. Yeah. All right. Uh, now, speaking of music, <laughs> uh, you're hosting the big MTV Awards. Yes. Yeah. Is that this exciting is, for you? Yeah, I'm looking, those, I, I like, I don't usually like award shows, like, but this is like, fun because it's music. Mm -hmm. I don't like the Academy Awards. I mean, I, I'm not saying I, I You don't like, like the win Academy one. Awards. I ain't saying I wouldn't like to win one. I'm saying I don't like to be there. <laughs> I would win and say, uh, excepting for Eddie. But, uh -huh. you know, but um, I like music award shows because you get to see bands, you see shows and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Now, will you be eligible for one of these awards? Do you have anything? I guess not. An MTV this, Award? Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Now, like, are you going to make a video? Yes, we're doing a video next week. Rick mm -hmm. and I are shooting a video for that song party all the time. So it will be you and Rick in the video? Yes. Yeah. And so it will be eligible for the awards next year? Yes. Yeah. Now, would, it, would that be exciting for you to win one of those? Yes. <laughs> Now, did I read something this morning that you said that the, the awards weren't that big a deal? I never said anything like that. Where'd you read that at? Newspaper? Did we read that in the newspaper? I have I a battery that. of attorneys over here. You, what paper did you read it in? The Post? <laughs> I never said that. Uh, uh, you still living in New Jersey? I'm moving from one part of Jersey to another part. <laughs> I bought a house about two miles away. Yeah. Well, that's good. You like staying over there. I like Jerry. Now, is it true uh, that uh, at one point a guy came to your door with a script under his arm? Yes. One of your neighbors had written a script? What they was... come to the door with everything in Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> they came with a script. The script wasn't that, Bob, what was the name of that script? Dust to Dust. Dust to Dust. It turned out to be okay. And dust they, to Dust? A neighbor had written it? Yeah. A, a guy, a man or a woman you knew? I have no idea. Was mm -hmm. it somebody just gave me a script and I read it? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to have everybody like this. <laughs> I wrote something. <laughs> but uh, I read the script. It was a good script. And Is there a chance that it'll get made? It's a chance that I'm, I, it's not good for me. 
but it's like this, it's a funny movie. Good for maybe your next door neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I want to be in Dust and Us. <laughs> uh, well, that'd be quite a story, though, if a guy from the neighborhood gets to you and gets the, the film produced. That'd huh? be something. Yeah, it'd be exciting. We're going to do a uh, commercial here, and then we'll be back with uh, Mr. Eddie Murphy right after this, folks. <laughs> Murphy is here. Now, uh, you mentioned you moved to another section in New Jersey. Yes. You, you think you'll ever move to California, Los Angeles, something like that? Hollywood? Uh, no. Why not? Because I'm an extremist, and there's so much of everything out there that I'd probably die if I moved to L.A. Really? Yes. You, you would go out there and uh, project for us what might happen to you? A lot of the, Specifically, I know, a, I know. It's a party town. Put it like too that. much party. Too much party could kill you. Yeah, yeah. especially uh, in the eighties. Yeah, uh, you go to a lot of parties. Not as much as I used to. Uh -huh. You go to a lot of parties in New Jersey. There's, there aren't many parties in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> They're not. It's a place where it's the Garden State. You live there. It's quiet. It's not a party place. But California is uh, could be trouble. Show business in California, Martin Mull, I think, and I keep saying this over and over, had the best line to describe show business in California. It's like high school with money. That's good. Yeah, pretty much it. Now, what about Indiana? You were making funny Indiana. He's from Indiana. I'm from Did Indiana. you know he was from Indiana? Yeah, we know that. Now, have you ever Do been Do you know that Michael Jackson is from Indiana? Gary, Indiana. Did you all know each other coming up? Yeah, we had a paper route together. Who would have thought that y'all was from the same town? Now, have you ever been to Indiana? Never, ever. Oh, that's a great place. I bet it is. <laughs> Uh, now, tell me about the movie. Are you under a lot of pressure to do another movie? Because all I read about is Eddie's rejecting scripts, Eddie's accepting scripts, he's looking at scripts. I'm afraid to... Do See, the scariest thing I've ever done in my career was a movie called Best Defense. Because it was really, really bad. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> and everything was going so good right before I did it. Then all of a sudden, it looked like it was gonna, everything was going to stop. And um, I'm just afraid, after cop, I'm afraid to, to just do anything and have people going, that's it, it's over, it's no more. He's terrible, he sucks. I don't want to... <laughs> can you say sucks on your television? Yeah, yeah on this show you can, sure. Uh, yeah, but, you know, that's interesting, but, uh, because uh, uh, Beverly Hills Cop was the most successful motion picture, what, of all time? Something unbelievable no, like no, that? No, 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 no. It's in the top five the top... all-time grocers. Which one it? is it, Bob? Eight. Top eight. Is it eight? Now, Why don't you just say eight, the eighth instead of the top eight to have people going, which one is it? It's the eighth. It's the, it's the eighth. In yeah, the Bob, book. we really don't have time to guess which number it is, okay? <laughs> what the hell is Bob? Bob's my manager. Bob, hey, nice Bob, you've never been on TV. That's come right, out here. That's let's keep it that way. No, Bob, stay, come here. No, stay over there, Bob. Bob, Bob come here. Bob. Flex, come here. Bob, Bob. just come, come say here, hi. That's my manager, Bob White. Oh, Bob, oh, that's Bob. Do me a favor, button it up, Bob. Will you? Uh, Bob, be sweating, boy. See all that yeah, sweat? He didn't, want, he didn't want to come over here, did he? No, sir. He uh, said his name is Nathan. Shh. So anyway, what I'm saying is you could still have a huge hit and not be as successful as Beverly Hills Cop. Now, that wouldn't bother you. You know what I'm saying? Because this oh, is the first I don't, one. Yeah. I don't think, like, I don't know. I don't, you know, you never know what a movie's going to do, but that movie's a freak cop for people to go out. And, I'm Thank you for going out and seeing it, but not many movies do that, mm -hmm. you know? So are you are you spending a lot of time trying to figure out a way to make the next one as successful, or are you trying to use your instincts? I just want the next one to be entertaining. Yeah. I don't want to look like I got all these scripts out of any place and just read them and just jumped on something to do some, a movie. Have you seen something you like pretty well? There's a movie called Golden Child that we're going to do. We can't find a director because we're having problems with directors now because it's real interesting. It's Let like, Bob direct it. Bob, <laughs> Bob would sweat. <laughs> no, it's like, it's real strange. It's like before you get successful as an actor, it's like no one wants to really work with you because they don't really know who you are. Right. Then you get successful. Now I'm in a position It's like a director's kind of pulled back because if the movie's a success, 
they go up. Eddie Murphy's at yeah, it again. That's right. But if the movie goes in the toilet, they go, the director's horrible. Abs- absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's like you can't win, so it's hard yeah. to find a good director, and we can't find a good director, yeah. but we're looking. But you'll see something by next Christmas, probably. Oh, that's great. Golden Child. It's a good movie. When it comes out, run to the theater to see it, because it's a good movie. Uh, I got to talk about these people. And I'm hosting the MTV Awards oh, Eddie, September 13th. This is a plug, please. This is a plug. Oh, no. I'm going to tell you who's on the show. Oh, Eddie. The Eurythmics, <laughs> Hall & Notes, John Cougar, Melancamp, This will all Zari be edited out. We'll Pat Benatar, all. We'll any of Sting, this. just wait a second. Tears for Fears, Tina Turner, John and about, Andy Taylor of Duran Frankie Duran. Goes to Hollywood? Will they be there? No. David, will Frankie Goes to Hollywood be there? They went to England. They're in England. So now, who's that guy? <laughs> That's Les this Garland. Unbelievable. From Les, come out here and say hi, Les. Les? That's Les Garland. Oh, all right, all right. Nice to see you. From MTV, Les Garland. Beat it, beat it, Les, beat it, beat it. One of, the, one of those cable weasels, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> David Lee Roth. for Rowe. sale, by the way. Did you know that? Grace it's for Jones. sale. Get your money first. It's for sale. MTV, they sold they it. They sell it? Gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, gone. We moved the it. The Cars. Chrissy Hind, is that how you pronounce her name? Okay. All right, as Eddie continues this Henley. list, we'll fade out slowly. Julius Lennon. Morris Day, Quincy Jones, Herbie no, no, Hancock, no, 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 and no, no. Glenn Frey. No, no. Eddie, nice to see you again. Good luck to you. Have a nice fall. We'll be right back, folks. Welcome back to the uh, program, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up later in this half hour, uh, Dick Cavett will be here, so also Reuben Blades tomorrow. That'll be Thursday night. It will be our summer replacement show starring Ken Berry, John Hartford, and Kamar, the magician. That'll be tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, our big summer replacement show. The studio is full of these uh, uh, cable weasels now. Buddies of yours. Uh, Les Garland's a nice guy. Now, you know something, Eddie? Cable is not the way good Lord intended TV to be. <laughs> <laughs> a guy comes out to your house, hooks you up with the cable, and then later, when you're gone, comes back and breaks in. I was supposed to leave. I'm not leaving because I want. You can stay right I want to be like Ed McMahon on your show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and right. I'll hoot. I'll hoot at his jokes. Oh, good. I appreciate that. Uh, my next guest is an actor, an author, a world traveler, and soon to be the host of a brand new show on USA Cable. <laughs> <laughs> Called the Dick Cavett Show. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to Ed Mines' good friend, Mr. Dick Cavett. Hey, Dick. Nice to see you, Thank you very much for being here. Nice to see you again. I appreciate you coming back. Now, is this true that you and Eddie are good friends? Oh, yes. Eddie. Oh, hello, Eddie Murphy. I've been a fan of yours for a very long time, and it's a pleasure to meet now, you. Now, how did you guys get to be friends? Are you, in fact, friends? Is he putting you? Did he tell you we were friends? Well, he told me that, and then, oh. and then we have reason to believe that you told us that. That is funny. <laughs> uh, we're more than friends, uh-huh. David. And, uh, I think that... Um, no, you're laughing now, but it, it's a beautiful thing. And I think that... Eddie and I have decided that it's maybe time to, well, maybe pictures speak louder than words. I, oh, good, photos. I don't know if they can see this or not. I had to buy that back today. Uh, can you hold God. that up, maybe? Let me, in, see. Uh, Let me see. Kind of strange. It looks, I, like I it looks like a local version of Miami Vice is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God, no, we are Eddie, only, Eddie, Eddie. We are only good friends. That's the catch. Did you of MTV it. guys see this stuff? <laughs> oh boy, is my image uh, ruined. Now, when, uh, where did you first meet people. one another? Look how pale this guy is. <laughs> I didn't even know you had a shirt on until I looked closer <laughs> to the picture. Look at that. Listen, I don't that think picture. that's fair. I didn't ask to be born this color. <laughs> Will you come back? Look how pale he is. That is. <laughs> I look like the late Harry Langdon, don't I? Yeah, it looked like you've just been released from the hospital yeah. and Eddie's taking care of you. 
I'm going to try and nurse you back to health. Well, I, look, I look like the number one Yaku of all time, no? Well, now, where did, they, where did you first meet Eddie? Eddie, uh, where, where Eddie At the and Oscars. No, it was the Emmys, wasn't it? Some award show. You know how yeah. much I hate them, but I go to all of them. <laughs> yeah, no, Eddie, Eddie and I actually met one night, I, I think it was on Park Avenue. We were uh, getting the, you know, the empty Coke cans so you can get five cents. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met and, you know, exchanged <laughs> hefty bags and... Had, no, uh, we first met at, at that ceremony and... Uh, the Emmy Awards. He, he and Joan Rivers were hosting. Oh, yeah. And we kind of hit it off, you know, because our backgrounds are very similar. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, <laughs> He has a peculiar power over me that I didn't realize is sort of dangerous. We went out to, he, he hangs out at night. He's a night person and I'm not, but I stayed up later than I ever have. Uh, and every place <laughs> we went, he would dare me to do something. And because I wanted him to like uh -huh. me, you know. I, no, I, if you dare him to do something, he'll, he'll do, do anything that you dare him to do. If you do. I don't know, I, we were at a concert, see Diana Ross. Oh, he, don't tell that. And I Come said, he, I dared him to go up on stage, grab Diana Ross's butt. Man ran up on stage. <laughs> He ran up on stage, grabbed Diana Ross's butt, and everybody knows him, so Diana Ross said, Ooh, Dick Cannon! I was sitting there. So, then, later on, he comes to do Saturday Night Live as a guest thing. Eddie Grant, the guy from the West Indies with the dreadlocks, he had dreadlocks yeah. sitting inside the makeup room. Dick Cavett goes, how did they get the dreadlocks in their hair? I said, they just don't comb their hair. They just let it knot up. And he mm -hmm. says, well, I heard a rumor that they use goat feces in their hair. <laughs> And I said, get out of here, man. And he said, no, really. I said, I dare you to ask Eddie Grant that. You know? So he went inside the room and walked up to Eddie Grant, who's standing around with these Rastafarians around him. And I'm standing there laughing because Kevin's getting ready to get beat up. So. <laughs> <laughs> and he walks up to Eddie Grant and he goes, um, how do you get that in your hair? And uh, Eddie Grant goes, uh, we just don't comb our hair. We just yeah. let it. And Kevin goes, really? I heard a rumor that you use goat feces in your hair. <laughs> And the guys looked at Cavett, and he goes, uh, nah, man, that's not true. Yeah. And then Cavett looked at me and said, why'd you tell me that? And walked out the room. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but it actually scared him. He turned the color I am in this picture. <laughs> yeah. said that. I've never used the word feces in my life. I well, you, you can't say... You cleaned it up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you as can't someone say... Should I'm feces, telling but... you. <laughs> They'll boys, bleep that boys, out. Boys, They'll boys, bleep please, it please, out. Kids, kids, They'll kids. bleep it out. Tonight. And America will know what I said, even with the bleep. <laughs> you can bleep it. If I go and you see bleep, you know what you it means, so. <laughs> People are smarter than we give them credit for. <laughs> he, the one I felt bad about, though, was he, he, there was a bald man uh, at the bar in this place uh, uh, where he was checking out the hogs. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, was, Eddie was checking out the what? Oh, you don't know Negro talk? <laughs> honeys, honeys, I think. Oh, no, 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 no. And, uh... Well, the deaf, deaf girlies is the other one. Deaf, oh, yeah, I know. The deaf, what? No, it's not. We'll be down to trim. Then. That's all right, just ignore me. <laughs> so, oh, does David Letterman's name ring a bell? He said, go slap that bald man on the head. Well, <laughs> That, this is this, this is beyond infantile. comedy. It's, yeah. This Did is it. tiny. I mean, Slap his head. <laughs> Slap his head. Here I am. At a Carvel in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I, the guy took the money. I opened up the cash register. Went in the back. It's me and Dick. So I guess he didn't figure he was gonna steal. And I said, I dare you take twenty dollars out the cash register. <laughs> took twenty dollars out the cash register. <laughs> Didn't give it back. Now, this was, is a felony. I did give. I, I mean to this give it back. This man stole. <laughs> when they do the test, y'all missing twenty dollars from two months ago. <laughs> Cabot <laughs> Murphy. <laughs> oh. Now what? What did the uh, what did the bald guy do when you sw uh, slapped he him? He did like Dan and Russell. Yeah, the Kevin. It's like, <laughs> it's like everybody knows him. <laughs> Can I, and you know, the weird that. thing is, his head felt better than Diana Ross's. Uh... But you know, now, wait a minute, all the kids. No, I didn't mean that. I, I, did, I didn't. But if two bald head men sit together, they make an ass of themselves. Yes, you remember they certainly that, do. Uh... <laughs> We've certainly raised the tone Are of this show. Are they bleep the word he just said? Uh, I don't know. It's very, sometimes we have, uh, it seems to be you can inconsistent. Say sometimes we ass. let this go, sometimes they we They probably bleeped it just now. I said, you can say it. They're gonna bleep the they're whole gonna, show. They're gonna know what you said. It's I not like he, people at home is sitting there and see somebody say and go like, I wonder what he said. <laughs> I don't know why they bleep. They I think anything thing. you say will probably stay in. I don't know about Dick though. Yeah, because they feel I know better, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> is this noticeable? What's that? Well, I'm taking my life in my hands now. 
This, I found this in the Orient, and I don't know what to do with it. I don't know where they give it Ow, to you. Oh, disgusting. good Lord. Yeah, give it to me. Good idea, sure. You think? No, you explain this, Dick. Well, that listen. stuff is still on the market. I'm, I was appalled. This is rather Here, you, you show that it? to the folks yeah, if you yeah, like. Yeah, no, this is really going to put a damper on things. You told me to bring this In out. In Bangkok, you can still can buy you this. believe this? It's called Darky Toothpaste. Yes. It's a picture of a brother with the <laughs> biggest <laughs> smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> this is dis In Bangkok. So if you ever go to Bangkok, just walk up and punch somebody in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> You see this stuff. It's really, it's, uh, it's uh, hard it's to believe, isn't it? I mean, uh, in this day and age. Good Lord. And what did you and pay for this? This is, uh, I can't make it. It looked like it said $10 on it. No, 10 baht. 10, 10, 10, 10 what? Bot. 10 baht. You bot. were recently in Bangkok, apparently. Oh, I was in Bangkok, yeah. What's That's 10 baht? But 10 baht. But it's certainly an attractive tube, isn't it? Yeah. They've done wonders with packaging over there in uh, Bangkok. Quite an amazing and original uh, tube. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Tooth it's taste. Colorful. It kind of leaps right out at you there. Uh -huh. uh, all right, I'll tell you what. Well, let's do a commercial here, and I want to hear more about, uh, if we have time, more to talk to Mr. Cabot about his trip to Bangkok. Well, that's, that's uh, a little... Huh? We don't? We don't have any more time. Can we buy time? Well... Or is there a way of... <laughs> how, how interesting is it? Let's just look, well, look at, at that sign that guy has. More with Dick Cabot. Yeah, I okay. gave him that sign. All right, we'll uh, do a commercial here, and then we'll be right back. Don't worry, we're coming back. Dick Cabot, Eddie Murphy. Now, Dick, we have, we have two minutes. Two minutes? Two minutes. Can you oh. tell us a, a great story about your trip to the Orient? An Holy exciting... moly. Well, I'm not sure about that. Story. You probably mentioned that I have this show coming on We took USA care of that already. So that's yeah. out of the way. Another work. cable operation. Uh, okay, I think I might talk about... Did you meet um, the guy from MTV over there? Yes, the guy in the funny threads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, uh, that's, that's an old-fashioned... That's a nice suit, that Les It, it is a very nice suit. Yeah, I wonder where it gets he's, batteries He's dressed for like it. a limo driver. Yeah. <laughs> no, in Bangkok, I think probably your audience would be most interested in hearing about 16th century jade sculpture or... The soap baths. Soap baths would be good, Or good, body sure. body, as it's called in Bangkok. What were you doing there, just as a tourist? Or you I went there for the Young President's Organization. Uh, they have about 40, 50 speakers, everybody from esteemed congressmen and so on to, uh -huh. to people like, you know, showbiz pantaloons like you and me. <laughs> showbiz and Eddie. pantaloons? Pantaloons and jack and apeses. <laughs> And uh, somebody took me along, as an observer, of course, to one of the body body places. Now, what is that exactly? Well, you go into a place, it seems like a hotel, sort of, and then there's a one huge glass wall behind which, seated, even as these people in the audience are, are about 200 of the most beautiful women you can imagine in your wildest fantasy. Mm -hmm. And they're all sitting kind of like this, and you're not quite sure why, and that turns out they're TV sets to keep them amused. They each have, have a number, like out of the mic outside the window says, number 23 is, I think, be or kind, and so and so, and this one is very nice, and so on. What men purchase these ladies for their services. Hmm. 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 Indeed. And uh, the, the, the specialty of the place is some kind of erotic soap like substance that they put all over the body of the, the person, as I found from asking around. And. Uh, <laughs> And then the girl says, "You, you these like... are perfectly legal. These places, I'm guessing." Oh, oh, well, maybe not actually, but uh, they're there anyway, and everybody knows. They, it. they operate There's under the, with the knowledge. Pat Pong of... Street is the main. Uh -huh. Well, maybe you're not. Are you supposed to plug streets in Bangkok? <laughs> and, and... <laughs> anyway, uh, and then what they do is, and they—I'd always heard about this—slide up and down one's body. Good lord! And it, uh, yeah, with this soap, this fabulous soap-like stuff. You're lucky and... you lived to tell about it. Absolutely ruined a blue suit of mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Eddie, nice to see you again. Good luck on the MTV Awards, sir. Thank you. Thank you for coming by, Mr. Cabot. Are we being kissed As off always, now? nice to see you again. Oh, and uh, come back after another trip, sir. Hey, there you go. We'll be back here with Ruben Blades, hey. folks. My next guest was with us once before. It's a pleasure to welcome him back. He is considered the most popular salsa singer in the world, and he is also starring in a movie called Crossover Dreams. Please welcome once again, Reuben Blades.
black sedan pool next a rundown bar. From its window hung a light beer neon sign. Here, sir. Uh, we're going to do a commercial and then we'll be back to chat for a second with Mr. Ruben Blade. Did you catch one? Ruben, thank you very much for being here again. And congratulations, the movie is continuing to be very, very successful, isn't it? You're going to be a big star. And you recently graduated from Harvard. Yeah. Yes, finally. sir. Thank Mr. God. Big Shot here. Uh, <laughs> my thanks to Dick Cavett, Eddie Murphy, and of course, Ruben Blades. Tomorrow, Dave Letterman, Summertime Sunshine Happy Hour. It's our summer replacement show. Join us then. Good night, folks. Thank you.